Video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. And we're up next to another fantastic team here on the Open Alliance Show. Please welcome in 6423 uh, Iron Patriots. Uh, hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. Well, if you don't mind, just introduce yourselves, let us know what you do on the team, and we'll jump into what you're working on. Yes, hello. My name is Gabriel, and I'm the co-captain of the team. Hello, I'm Yin Fan, and I am the CAD lead. Uh, so you guys are based out of uh, New York uh, State, right? So you're still a uh, regional team competing at uh, the uh, Long Island uh, Regional Number 1 this year, uh, Week 4. So you guys got a while till your first event. Uh, so we can't wait to see as we go through this season here how your team continues to uh, improve and showing off some more things. Of course, we have some CAD uh, up here uh, of your CAD display, so we'd love to jump more into that. But, guys, uh, we'll have you kind of kick it off and let us know what you've been working on and what you want to present here today. So right here, we have a basic idea of our drive base and one of our arm mechanisms. Uh, this is going to be our first year using a swerve drive base. So we're get, starting to get adjusted to it by looking at code examples and how to switch over from the old drive that we used to have. And we're planning to have a smaller uh, robot this year, just 26 by 26, to give more space to our Alliance members on the charge station. If, if you want to talk a bit more about this specific CAD design. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've been referring to this design as the Zhang idea, and it consists of mainly this linear slide component. It is elevated by this uh, a scissor jack, which is probably going to be powered by a cable, although we've also considered pneumatics or using a lead screw. The main part of this system is this giant four-stage linear slide, which should extend out like this about 80 inches. Wow. And we've been working through some problems, but the prototype looks really promising. So we think we'll be able to pull this off. And, and, and so this is, this is the direction that your team is going now, full force ahead, or is this still a concept? Right now, it's still a concept, although we are more or less, uh, we more or less know that this will be one of the final designs that we will consider. When yes, you... we have one other arm design we're considering, which is a more traditional arm with just, uh, as on the CAD there, where it just um, rotates up and down. That's what I was going to ask when, you, when you're looking at approaching uh, the charged up game on there, uh, what were kind of some of the uh, designs you considered? And then uh, when you're looking at for this type of this four stage mechanism you have, what made you determine this was the right path for your team? So something we're trying to stick to this year is trying to keep it simpler just so we have more time to perfect all of our systems and more time to do things like practice with autos, getting our drivers more custom. So that's one of the main things. And the other thing is practicality. We played some other ideas like to a horizontal elevator attached to a vertical elevator, but that just did not seem very realistic. So we just gravitated towards these two ideas. And looking at from from the uh, game design challenge uh, in general, uh, when uh, is it, if I can see it right, it looks like you guys are doing swerve. Is that right? Yes. Um, so what made you determine like, hey, swerve is going to be right for for our team? Uh, what got you ready? And have you done any testing or have you used swerve before in the past? We have not used Swift before. This is our first year with Swift. We're still waiting for it to arrive, but we're very excited to finally use it for the first time. And we decided on Swift because the, for this game, it's a more open field. So we feel that having Swift, that actual mobility will be extremely useful. And um, so so I'm looking at your, your arm here, um, and it's quite, quite the long extension. Uh, how are you planning or are you thinking about powering that out? Uh, really, right now, we're just thinking of 
maybe using some sort of spool system and one or two motors of some kind. We're not too sure about that yet, but uh, it should work on. It should work based on our pre preliminary tests. Okay. And then, uh, so tell us, tell us, so you're picking, you know, you're deciding between these two different arm systems. Um, what else uh, are you thinking about for your robot? What type of intake or score, or how are you going to put the cone or the cube on the end of this arm? So we have two manipulator prototypes I have here with me. This was one of the early ideas we were playing around with this, where essentially this 3D printed model with two pneumatics that can extend outward. So the claw would be here and can close in or out with it. But the more finalized design we're most likely going with is this claw mechanism. So it's also powered by pneumatics and essentially each one, they would go together to close like this. And we're thinking of having this here that can rotate. So that way, when you grab, say, a cone, the center of mass will be more towards the bottom. So we'll automatically write itself up. Ah, all right. So yeah, so you, you, want, you want to basically allow it. So when you grip it in, you're just the, the gravity is just going to hold it so that wherever your arm is, you can place it clearly on the scoring spot. Yes, uh, this claw was inspired by a mechanism by RI3D, which is how we got the original idea. Oh, well, that's 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 great. I mean, you guys are Open Alliance, and RI3D is there to help kind of give teams. So that's that's really great. It's kind of you know the one one step forward. Yes. From uh, your your different types of intakes, and coming from somebody who who did some work with the Redux as, uh, team as well too, uh, we one of the things that we saw was when we went to uh, grab cones occasionally. If you didn't pick it up in the right spot with that type of intake, uh, occasionally we see either slippage or sometimes the cone couldn't fully pivot the right way because the clearance on it uh, wasn't fully uh, where it needed to be. Have you guys taken that into consideration at all when you're in regards to picking up the cone specifically? Yes, we'll still have to do more tests with this cone system just to make sure that everything will function properly. But we're hoping to just to get this to give around the right amount of strength so that way it gives it enough to hold it, but not too tightly that it can't properly rotate. So overall, um, it seems like you're well on the way with these different prototypes. Um, how about we talk about a little bit about just overall game strategy, right? So you've uh, you've elected to go for a long reach. Um, so um, you know what what when you put your robot on the floor during a match what are your goals like what are you trying to do every single match and how are you approaching this game so trying to have as fast of a cycle time as possible we quickly go out to the double substation the one that has the slider easily pick up a cone there just because it'll be more simpler since we always know we upright and then rush back to our own grid and place it on the top and get all those um horizontal rows so the primary strategy is run from the human player, pick up the cone, pick up the cone, run it back, score it on the top. Yes, we're also um, making sure that we are able to do ground intake just in case we need to, but that's going to be our primary focus is taking it from the human players. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with just picking up and saying from the human player, you know, because you have those dedicated loading spots for your alliance and it's a protected zone, there's no reason to assume that you're not going to be able to get a cone there. So. Um, that's a pretty pretty uh, good strategy, especially you know since you talked about trying to keep it a little bit simple there this year. Um, that is a great way to keep it simple and also you know focus in on other things. Um, something I want to ask your team about is looking through your build blog in there. Uh, this is the first year, if I read that correctly, your team's looking at doing vision uh, on the field. Is that right? Yes, we've never before had a proper camera session, and we got off the slime light a bit earlier this year. So, so talk to me about uh, how that process has been so far. Have you had a chance to do any uh, testing yet? And, and what specifically, I guess, are you, are you looking at doing? Are you, are you looking at doing the April tags? Uh, are you still looking at doing some, uh, some vision tape out there? Uh, what have you been trying out? So we've had a chance to mess around with a little just by having our robot align with April tags. That's what we're most likely going to do just to make it easier to align with certain things. So we're also going to see what we can do with the reflective tape and see which one is more overall useful for scoring and which one the drivers prefer. And how about next steps? As you look at towards the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, you know the next time we check in with you is going to be after week four, right? So we'll, you got three weeks in, until then. What are kind of the next steps for Iron Patriots to really accomplish? What do you want to get done in the next uh, three weeks? What are kind of your goals that route? So by then, our swerve drive should have arrived. So one of our main focus is just getting our drive based done so we can start 
testing all of our programming on it and testing things like Autosan. So that's going to be one of our main focuses, especially because we're going to be building from our drive base up. Other than that, the main thing is just going to be continually prototyping with these arms and these claws to get a more finalized design. When uh, something I want to go back to real quick on on your uh, robot cab that you had on there is uh, with with that type of arm that you're having on there. How do you uh, like? Where are you looking at your center of gravity on your robot being? Because when you reach out that far, uh, you know potential. It looks like you have a really low dry base, which is great, right? Uh, but how are you factoring that into play to make sure you're not going to be tippy during a match uh, or anything like that? So we're trying to keep on testing with cloud to make it as light as we possibly can, just to avoid that same issue. We may also, depending on which mechanism, try and add a counter weight. Wait, just so that way we don't tip over too far in one direction. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, it looks like a, a pretty decent plan. Um, I am I am excited to see uh, this kind of come together. Uh, I would definitely say make sure that you have uh, plenty of time and opportunity to uh, focus on the drive mechanism for this. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of these kind of linear extension elevators that are kind of going out the side and um, cabling and rigging those things are not uh, not often as easy as people think they are. So uh, I think I think you're on the right path to uh, get going and try to keep it simple, but also you know make sure that you leave yourself plenty of time to prove it out because reliability is going to be an incredibly important part of this game. Absolutely. Well, Iron Patriots, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking time to tell us more about uh, what's going on with the team. As mentioned, uh, we'll see you in just a few weeks. We can't wait to uh, uh, check in on your updates, see how you're doing so far. Uh, we're excited for you, and we hope you guys are excited for the season, too. Yes, of course we are. Thank you. Awesome. Well, good luck uh, the rest of the way. We'll see you in just a few weeks. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Of course. See you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at Kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.